So obviously we've, we've covered quite a lot of content in there, haven't we? Yeah. Through yeah. fixed growth mindset, we talked about habit forming, willpower. Yeah. All these different aspects. There's a lot of information there. Yeah. What do you think you've taken from it the most? Yeah, I think for me personally, it's if you have to start from the beginning, you know, the influence that has had, not you know, in my life, it's, it's been exponential. Um, Starting with the fixed mindset, growth mindset was the beginning for me, I would say. Mm. Um, just changed my perspective a little bit of, towards life um, in the general sense of there was like this um, narrative around me as a player um, and who I need to be as a player and, and that's basically, that's been sold around the world, this is the type of player he is and that's that's almost as if there was limits on me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just, he's just yeah. a bold carrier, he's just... After having, like, those meetings and stuff, I just realized, you know, there's more, there's more in there, you know? It's like, yeah. there's more I can give, there's more I can do, and I know that, you know? And that made me think about, you know, when I was a young boy, when you were playing rugby and playing touch or after rugby trainings, you know, I used to kick a lot and do, you know, certain skill bits and stuff like that. And, you didn't overthink it. You don't. You didn't think about what people thought about you, or the narrative, or whatever. Yeah. You just did it because you enjoyed it, you know. Mm. And that fixed mindset suddenly started to change within me, you know. And it went to like a growth mindset, where first you have to convince yourself that you want to do it, and that you really feel it's going to benefit you as a player and as a person, and that you know there's more. And once you make that decision to do that. It started changing, you know. Yeah. So after trainings, I would start doing some extra bits. You know, off season, I would go and do some kicking, do some some grubbers. You know, do you just do things that I'm not used to. You know, usually I would just run. This, this time, I, I ran under fatigue. I would do some extra bits, bit skill, mm. and uh, just expected more out, out of myself. You know, when we changed into that that growth mindset, and then after that, you know. All the sessions just combined. I started realizing after moving into this growth mindset that there's so much more within me, you know, yeah. as a player and as a person. Um, I was very focused on people's opinions. You know, what people thought about me <clears throat> was very important to me. Very important. I was, you would say, a, a people's pleaser. So I just want to make everyone I feel happy. And yeah. If yeah. you if you say something, I'll be, agree with you. I'll be like, yeah, one hundred percent, mate. That's that's spot on, you know. And, mm. and I'll just I'll just go. If someone says like, oh, you just you just carry, mate. Don't don't think about passing or you know, you just carry. I'll be like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So I was very fixated on on what people thought about me as as a person, and and it will keep me up at night, you know. Like I would lay in bed and think, fuck, this guy said this and that guy said said this and. You know, my wife, I feel sorry for my wife because I was up at night, say 2 a.m., 3 a.m., still awake because my head was so occupied with all of these comments and things and opinions yeah. and stuff. You know? mm. And then after working with yourself and the staff here, you know, everything just started changing, man. I started realizing that, I don't feel, you know, other people don't, doesn't determine where I need to go as a person. You know, what they think of me or what they may what their opinions may be over me is like it's not that important anymore you yeah. know because I've got a family a beautiful family which I'm blessed with um, and that changed again my perspective man just started thinking about working working hard and expecting more out of myself but not putting pressure on myself you know yeah. it's just like uh, undying work ethic that I want to fulfill, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And that's, obviously, that's how the mind gym has started changing me in, in that sense. And I'll dig into that a bit later, but like, that's how the mind gym has changed my perspective in, in training sense. Because usually I was a lazy bastard, you know, I would just like, do, do the minimal, you know, and just what is expected of me and I'll, and I'll be content with that, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. just like, that's what it was, that's what is expected from me and that's what I need to do. and after having all these mind gyms, then all of a sudden something goes off in your mind and you think, gee, am I doing enough? You know? yeah. And yeah. then it started changing and obviously 
we'll get into that, but like, it just changed my perspective. Yeah. So uh, we always say, don't we, you can never truly teach a person anything. You can only help them find the way for themselves. Yeah. So we can try and arm you with the tools, mm. but it's up to the individual to take those tools and to yeah. use those tools as well. Yeah. And until you make that realization yourself, it's going to be difficult. So you've got to be open-minded, aren't you? Open-minded to change, wanting to grow. And I remember the first conversation we ever had, and it were in the hotel, uh, Exeter last year, and you opened up a little bit about, about what you just spoke about there, about uh, always wanting to impress other people and always being worried about other people's opinions. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we spoke about, have you, have you ever truly impressed yourself? Mm. She'd spent so much time trying to impress others, but yeah. had you ever truly impressed yourself? Yeah. To become inspirational to others, first it starts within, doesn't it? To, yeah. to truly impress yourself, then you can yeah. start to inspire others. And I think, that were quite a profound conversation for us both, really. That, yeah. that started us on this journey, really. Yeah. And what does that look like then? What does it look like to impress yourself? Yeah. And I think you went and did a lot of introspection on that, didn't you? And yeah. A lot of soul searching and what yeah. it take to make you truly happy and impress yourself, so that you could go out on this this journey to start to inspire and help others. Yeah. Because you know, it's true, Lang. It's like in the beginning, I was after having that conversation, I, I thought to myself, "It's like, am I? Have I ever?" Impressed myself, you know. People have obviously had their like comments and say, "Oh, you look so good. You look great. You're doing so well." And, and deep inside, you know, like that is like close to the minimal of what you can do. You mm. know. And for other people, it might be great and wonderful, but for yourself, it's, it's like I haven't actually done much, you know. And then after having that conversation, where we say that, yeah, well, you have to go out and impress yourself. Do things that. You haven't done before where you can feel like shit i really did something here yeah, something special mm. and then we spoke about that training program didn't we yeah, like yeah. about the broncos and and the you know the malcolms and yeah got really stuck into that because that's a real grind <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that, yeah that's like a heavy that that takes you into dark places you yeah know? and then automatically when i started doing that even on days where i felt like shit you know it, woke up and I just thought to myself like I don't want to do it it's pissing down and you don't want to go outside I still managed to get here you know, mm. and do my stuff do whatever I need to do to feel good for that day that I could actually sleep at night yeah and uh, and that's 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 the point of difference I feel like it's on those difficult days where it's tough and you feel mentally fucked and it's just like I don't want to do it today mm. you know no one's going to see me. You know? Yeah. No one's going to see what I'm doing today. You know, it's like I'm not. It's not as if I'm going to post this or where anyone's going to fool me or anything. You know, it's like that's the mentality you go into. You're like, oh yeah, but it's not needed today. Mm. So I don't have to do this today. So I just have a nice, chill day with the missus and watch the movies and stuff. And then on those days when you still go out and you go do it. Yeah. I think that's the point of difference. That's where starts to set in this is the, this is where it's changing now you know because yeah. it's the easiest thing just to step back into your comfort zones you yeah know, and 100%. the person you used to be mm. and then on those days you go you get stuck in because it only takes 30 minutes sometimes it only takes 45 minutes you know and then it's it's done it's over and then you can enjoy the rest of your day you don't have to um Sit at night thinking, oh, but I didn't do my session today because it haunts you, mate. Yeah, it yeah. really does. Yeah, when you change your perspective and when you change what you want to become as a person, and, and you want to have, you know, you want to basically be your own idol in a sense. You want to fucking, you want to work towards something. It changes you, man. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it haunts yeah. you if you don't do your shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's that's what I found. Like, um, it's really changed, like the way that I have an outlook on, on my life, man. Yeah. And obviously I had my wonderful wife that pushed me. Because mm. you need support, man. You need support, yeah. You 100% need support. And I remember I texted you as well, if I'm done with my session, you'll, you'll be like, all right, great, next week, you know, we go into that. Mm. And you need good people around you, bro. Yeah. Because like the moment you surround yourself with people, it's like, yeah, don't you don't have to do that today. Don't worry about that, but yeah. just have a rest. I don't want to have a rest deep, deep, deep within. I don't want to have a rest. But if you tell me to have a rest, I have, unfortunately, I had that mentality where if you just tell me just have a chill day, I would take that chill day. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. If you have to say that to me. But like, yeah. 
If you say to me, oh, remember you have this session, then I'll go. But now it's changed. So no one has to tell me what to do anymore, how to do it. Yeah. I just want to go do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, yeah. And that's 100% like just the change of perspective that we've implemented like in our lives, especially around some of the boys, you know. It starts within, like you said, it starts yeah. within. And then the moment it manifests inside you, yeah. It starts to show people start asking questions yeah, yeah. and you're still going to find people saying he's doing way too much that guy he's you can't do that much and you're still going to have that few people that's going to say but oh, you need to stop gymming oh you can't do so many speed sessions you don't have to do that extra conditioning session today mm. just have a race just have i don't want to fucking rest right like mm. i only have this certain amount of time to work you know what i mean and, yeah and I know this will endure into my life when I'm not done with rugby, but like, this is where it starts, man. You know, yeah. this is where it manifests itself, where I can actually be an influence to, to people, actually start helping people. Because there's something that I do want to get into is like the emotional and the mental side of, and the negative side of, of, of the mentality that you can have, you know? Yeah. And that's something obviously we'll get into, but like, you don't have to listen to people all the time. You're gonna wanna have to do your own thing because the moment you start listening to everyone, you're gonna be so lost, man. Mm. You're gonna feel lost in the world, and you don't want that. No, no, that's no. the worst, eh? Yeah. yeah, and that's why we spend so much time talking about what our own intrinsic motivating factors are, what our values are, yeah. what values drive our behaviors, our belief systems, all those things, yeah. because it starts from within, as you say. And we are the most important person in our universe, yeah. but we care more about other people's opinions than his own, which yeah. sounds crazy when you think about it. So yeah, first impressing yourself, like we say, once yeah. you do that, then you can become inspirational and help others. Yeah. And it might just be one person that you can affect positively yeah, in definitely. the world, but that's that's how these things begin. Yeah, so that's, yeah. and I know that's something that you're incredibly passionate about, Yeah. was helping people, but it, start, it, does, it started within. Yeah. And now, as you say, you're, you're on that journey now, aren't you, to, yeah. to helping others? Yeah, definitely. I think I'll, I'll dig a little bit deeper now into a little, just a short story of my life. It's, um, so in Afrikaans, there's a saying that says, um, gebeur in drie's. so that's like things happen, things happen in threes, like events happen, happen in threes. And sometimes it's in the positive, sometimes it's in the negative. Mm. Um, and for myself, it happened in threes. So the first, I'll just give a short like summary of it. The first thing was I lost my mom to cancer when I was quite young. So I was, what, 20, 21 or 22, I can't even remember. Um, I lost my mom to cancer. So I was like in the, the best time period of my life, I thought, in my head. Because I was on the verge, you know, playing Springboks, being in the camps and everything. Um, I was a consistent starter for the Lions back then. So everything was happening for me, you know what I mean? I've got great sponsors, great support systems. Everything is just like, on the outside, everything was just fantastic, you know yeah. what I mean? Couldn't ask for anything better. So then the first moment happened, I lost my mom to cancer. I never re reflected on it because I was always portrayed as the happy go, not a happy go lucky, but a happy person. Nothing will get me down. You know, we had a mental coach, a coach back then that's like, any bad situation that happens to you, you can get past it, move forward, you know? So my mind was just fixated on just moving on, just going for the next thing, next job, basically. Yeah. Lost my mom, mom never reflected on it. So I was just like, we were relaxed. We played the Waratahs that weekend. And I was like, well, I, I'm going to play regardless. Yeah. It's for her. I said, it's for her. It was for her in a sense, but like, it was that pride kicking in, like, because yeah. I didn't want to reflect on the moment what happened, the situation yeah. that happened. Yeah. So I was like, I'll play. Had a great game, played well, um, scored two tries. That I remember it like yesterday. Had a great time, great game. On to the next one, we played Sharks, won that game, then we played Stormers, second event. Mm. Got a massive injury on my knee, operated it, everything. You know, a freak accident happened. I think Evan tried to pull me down and one of the flankers fell on my knee, hyperextended, tore my hamstring, LCL, everything was like in the knee, at least not the ACL, but it was still a seven month, eight month injury. Yeah. So that happened. Went for surgery and everything. And then... So that was in the space of 
three weeks. Or yeah, two weeks. Two yeah, weeks. within two weeks that both those events happened. Yeah. And then <clears throat> literally two weeks after that, just a normal day at home, watching movies and, and stuff. Obviously, my legs like this in, the, in a brace, can't do anything. Mm. Um, so obviously watching movies, just chilling, was on painkillers, obviously do just numb the pain. And then obviously uh, like sleeping tablets to be able to sleep at night and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, it was a lovely day, sun was shining. Late at night, it was about 11 o'clock. Sat there, one of my mates was over as well. And he went outside. And I remember like looking at him, I wondered why is he going outside? And he went outside, look at him. All of a sudden he's like, oh shit. Ran straight into the house. And I thought he was messing around because we used to mess around like that, you know, as kids and stuff. Still, I'm still a kid. Anyway, <laughs> um, and all of a sudden three men run, runs in, you know, with guns in their hands. And, you know, my whole life I thought about how am I going to react in these moments where, you know, these intense moments like that happens. Mm. And now I'm sitting there with a brace on my leg obviously watching movies and these three men with guns running. And I'm just like, hands in the air, mate. Like, um, and it was so intense and it was overwhelming in a sense that like, you never think that would happen to you because you only hear about it like in, on, on the TV or read about it and stuff like that. And then you just see like these three guns in your face, bro. It's just like intense. But with that happening, stayed calm, stayed relaxed, spoke to them as much as I can, made them feel comfortable within my own house, them obviously yeah. wanting whatever. I won't go too much into that, but like taking whatever there is, what is. And um, after it all ends, they were like, oh shit, we don't have a, a car to get out. So they never thought about how are they gonna get out of all these. So they took one of the cars and loaded it up. And I'm sure, I'm sure none of them you know, none of them could have drive because we had to go through a gate, obviously with security and stuff. So it's going to look a little sketch if they didn't drive. So I had to drive them out, so basically. So like they kidnapped me, in a sense, and I had to drive them out to where they live. Yeah. So on the way there, spoke to them as well, and um, they're very comfortable. Took their like their masks off and everything. Very comfortable around me. Because I made them feel that way, you know what I mean? It's like, I made them feel comfortable because I don't want, I say to them, I don't want you guys to feel like you're stealing this from me. This is, think of this, I'm giving it to you because I know life's tough. So just have these things and, you know, let's just like yeah. say our goodbyes, you know? Yeah. And we stopped. And all of a sudden I just hear like this arguing at the back and out of these guys, like, um, I saw one of them was obviously the leader and he just came to my window and pointed his gun here on my chest and he said, listen, you've seen our faces, you've spoken to us. If you have to come back, you're going to recognize us and you're going to... And he said, listen, we have to, we have to do this, basically. And I just sat there and, you know, realized, listen, this is the end for me. Everything was great. I had a great life. I made, like, basically peace with the fact that I'm not going to be on Earth anymore. And I just sat down and started praying, you know. Um, and all of a sudden, I just hear, like, a scatter and I just see them running off with everything. And uh, a bit of humor in that, they left some of the money of mine on the, on the seat to get some petrol because <laughs> the car was almost empty. But anyway, so that happened. So that's the three events that happened in my life. You know, it's like that's the three major events that changed everything for me back then. That's the things that made me depressed, made me feel like I'm not good enough, invaluable. Uh, I don't want to succeed anymore. I don't want to do, I went into a place of, uh, contentment where I felt like I am better than something, you know, certain situations, you know. Um, I had conversations with people that I shouldn't have had, you know, I've, I said things to coaches and, and people in my life that I shouldn't have said. I've let a lot of people down because of my mediocrity and who I was back then. Um, I would say in a sense I was a very um, cocky person, you know, because I never reflected on any of the, the happenings in my life, you know, yeah. the moments which were so important yeah. that I just brushed off and I said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to see, I don't want that a part of my life. I never want to speak about that. Even, you know, in fact, a few months ago, I still didn't want to speak about that. I didn't want to have a chat about that because that's the things that 
that's the negative negative feelings about my life and I had a loving mom but she always said like just be a happy person just be sm- you you want people to see you smile you want to be a good person to be with people and, and I show sure, I show sure was and I still am but that made me forget that bad things do happen in your life injuries you know kidnappings you know um, stupid life decisions uh, money decisions you know spending money or whatever it may be like things happen in your life and you just you get into a, a mindset of like these things can just happen because it will just roll off and just go away and, and then the moment I started reflecting on these things and this is the moment where we started with the mind gym yeah. I actually started thinking about you know, why things haven't start, you know, happened for me anymore. Why has the momentum stopped in my life? You know what I mean? It's like, because I'm never, I was never happy. I was never happy. Even if we won, I'll still find things that's negative. Around the place, I'll like, I'll always be like the naggy one or just like sapping all the time. And I'll just, and then I'll think, then I'll blame everyone else. I always want to blame other people and things and situations instead of like, actually be like, oh, Wait, mate, aren't you the wrong one? I've, you know, that's how I, I used to be. And that was the narrative around me as well. Mm. That was what people thought about me. Is, you know, um, whenever I heard people say things about me and, and stuff, that was always said. It's like, I was it's just always negative, always, it looks like I'm sad or I'm negative towards things or situations. So that yeah. was the narrative. Yeah. And then the mind gym starts oh actually your influence in my life started with with, with these the work you've done you know and then the moment i started reflecting on that and actually looking back at those certain situations i've actually missed so many happy moments in my life mm. things that were good for me you mm. know meeting my wife having a wonderful child you know being at a great facility great club you know, things like that. Having all these opportunities that was right in front of me that I'd never taken because I was too occupied with the negativity of life and just thinking all the bad's going to keep happening because of those three moments. I just kept on thinking bad things are on my way. This this is just what, it, this is my life. And I make, you know, I make peace with that. This is my life. Bad things are, gonna, you know, going to keep happening to me and, and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden it changed. It's like my mindset change towards that started like you said it's like once the decision is made mm. like the real decision is made everything changes yeah because you're basically forcing yourself to go into a new mold into like a new person of expressing yourself as a person expressing yourself in training expressing yourself in the person you, you want to be and stuff like that and then everything around you started you know starts to change yeah. um and that's exciting yeah. Like, that's the exciting thing for me. And that's what I want everyone to experience because I, I wasted four years of my life, three, four years of my life I've wasted. And in some sense, it's not wasted because I still I endure through all of everything that I've went through. But now, now every day is just like a new opportunity. It's, ex- it's exciting, you know what I mean? It's just like, and I want everyone to feel that because, yeah, some people might, might think it's extensive, you know, it's... it's it's too much, you know. You can't be happy every day. You can't. You, you can't want to gym every day. You can't want to do fitness or training every day. You can't want to be a nice person every day to every single person. You don't want to. But that's who I choose to be every day. You know, I choose now to to be friendly. Like that's what you've influenced in my life. Is like I want to be friendly to people because you know if I've had too much time of being negative and, and sapping and just blaming people that. I haven't enjoyed people anymore. You know what I mean? I haven't yeah, enjoyed your, you can say, you know, I can't learn of you because I'm so stuck in where I was and the things that I, that's occupying my mind that I couldn't see what's the value within yourself as a person, you know? Yeah. And that's the type of things that I look into now, man. It's just like enjoying life, thriving, like giving everything I can every moment of the day it's like whatever I whatever I do I just want to be good at it for and even if I'm not good at it I'll, I'll come back and try again like <laughs> and I'm going to be on you and I'm going to be like I'll, I want to be a good friend to every single person you know what I mean and I, I'm sure some of the guys that's here will, will uh, definitely say that as well I, I with the gym stuff you know I'm, I'm into the gym I love gym now 
and uh, I'm trying to get all my mates into it as well. <laughs> and some days they don't want to do it, man. You know, some days they don't want to do it. Sometimes they don't feel like they don't have time for it. But mm. then I say to them, yeah, but just think about this. You're going to do it. You're going to smash. It. You're going to feel good. And then you're going to go home and you're going to relax. You can relax then. You know, a guy like um, a man who had never liked gymming in a sense. A man who never liked gymming. But every time he does it, he loves it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's like, but it's just getting him into that, like, wanting to gym. And now all of a sudden he's the guy asking me, oh, what time are we gymming? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's what I want everyone to start experiencing, you yeah. know. It's like in my life, just making that decision is so important because we, I think in this world, it's, it's crazy out there at the moment, man. Mm. But the great thing about it is you can choose what you want to allow in your life. You know, you can choose what you allow, the information that you allow into your body, into your mind, you allow that, yeah. whatever it is, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I think that was like just, one of the things that changed my whole perspective was because I didn't care about what people thought anymore because as long as I'm just staying true to what I want to do, yeah. and what makes me happy as a person, there's nothing else, mate. You know what I mean? Because as long as those things, those values contribute to being a good person, a good person to everyone, and not just to the people around me, but to everyone, yeah. mate, that's just like, that's that's just amazing. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's like just a short summary of like, but I have endured in where I want to go. And, and every day I'm still learning, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's, the, yeah. that's the journey that we're all on. That's the challenge. Yeah. But it starts from, as you say, it started those few months ago when you had that realization. Yeah. And you looked in within. Yeah. And you, you went through that period of self-reflection, introspection. Yeah. And that's now allowed you to become the person that you are or you want to be striving to be. Um, one of your main values is to be kind, to be helpful to people. Yeah. And that's what you're doing now. You're living that life, aren't you? Yeah. Which is amazing because you can see it radiating throughout the <laughs> the club. Yeah. And it spreads. Oh, thanks. And man. that's what we're all trying to achieve like within you know our own little worlds. But yeah. No, it's been amazing, man. Oh, it's been nice. amazing to see you on that journey. Yeah. I think uh, just one last thing from, from me is just want people to start realizing that the value that you have for yourself is more important than the value that other people would want to put on you. Mm. So if people, if people think that you have to be something or this, or they have a narrative around who you have to be, it shouldn't change your perspective of who you are yeah. inwardly. Yeah. That's the most important thing that I want to express is like, don't let people change you. you know, don't let people out there don't, make, don't let them make you feel like you have to be a certain person because they think this is who you are. Mm. Because that's the biggest mistake you can make. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're gonna maybe you're gonna do something great and they're gonna give you a pat on the back and they're gonna be like, well done, mate. But then they're gonna go on with their own shit. Mm. They're gonna go on with their own story, their own life. It's gonna be a moment they're gonna say, well done. And there's exactly the same on the other side of the, the coin. It's like, if you do something bad, they're gonna be like, mate, what the f did you do? Mm. Or what, what was that? Yeah, yeah. But it's gonna be 20 seconds of your life and then it's gone again. Yeah. And then you just go on with your own thing again. Not everyone's gonna like what you do. Not everyone's gonna appreciate the things that you wanna achieve. And some people are gonna say that you're this and you're fake and that you don't really represent that person because they know you from a certain time or place in your life, but that doesn't change who we are now, you know? And that's the thing that I'm really digging deep into is like yeah. trying to change people's perspective around who they are. And I think someone that's really changed a lot is Danny. Danny used to be in a very, um, difficult place in his life where yeah. he was the same as me, same yeah. as me. Yeah, yeah. And he's just flourishing at the moment, yeah. training hard, doing extra work, you know, and it's like so inspiring, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he's, he's a friend of mine as well. And there's plenty of stories in that building of exactly the same thing, yeah. you know, and, and only now since changing, I can start seeing that. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, yeah. that's the most, that is the most amazing thing and experience that I've had throughout this whole time is just seeing everyone's perspectives and mentality started to change, you know. Yeah.